Okay, so this is my this is my wood store. Um, I, and most of the wood uh, is all local is is all local wood, um, and all the the blanks I've actually cut myself and stored some of it from oh, eight or nine years ago because uh, I've been turning about ten years. Um, no, yeah, nine years. Um, there is a I don't know if you can see it uh, a fence post there which I'll tell you about it's one of the exciting little jobs I had to do I'll tell you about that in a minute but here you've got some of the the, the um, big timber that I use for, for, for furniture other things and also some turning all dating back out for this four inch thick elm 18 inches wide ash and all things like that but this fence post um, was the result of a phone call I got um, from Bangor University and Bangor University one of their um, students was doing his PhD and uh, he was doing a PhD and this is believe it or not in the growth of ivy and he wanted um, some uh, figures made or uh, posts made that were four foot long going from six inches down to nothing and they wanted the idea was that these posts would be placed on a bigger post uh, some at 45 degrees up in the air some at 90 degrees outside and some at 45 degrees down um, which was and how and the thought hang on how can I do a four foot post uh, how can I get a four foot post in my life I couldn't um, so I made one um, cut it bit and then put a tenon in but then he came to see me and I said well can I ask you why you want four foot posts he said well I just thought four foot posts I said well if you went for a meter post I said are, you, are your measurements in Oh yes, I said. Well, why don't you have a meter post, which meant I could get I could get the I could get it into the lathe uh, and and turn it. Uh, so I ended up doing twenty four to start with, and then um, Albert gave me a hand, and we did another another twelve because you could imagine the amount of waste that you got, and also it was just only worth using a roughing gout, but quite interesting exercise to do. Uh, you'll see some more timber here. Um, if, if it's light enough this time and this is all ash that was cut about uh, three years ago four years ago I should say and none of it's cracked which I'm quite pleased I'll take you back now into the um, into the workshop um, this is just to show you some of the other timber that, that I've got um, and that's that, that's ash more ash, some sycamore, which I'm trying to get as spalted and looking at it, it has gone spalted. But there's a couple of pieces here, which I don't know whether you can see, which are quite interesting. Whether I can get it out of them, I don't know. But that's, that, that's, that's mulberry. And one of the things I've managed to, to get is a, a good friend who works at one of the castles here. And... Uh, he is in fact looks after the the gardens and stuff and he'll phone me up and he'll say i've got this and i've had some really different different types of woods which have been which have been which have been brilliant so this brings you now um into my i think i'll just not yet i'll just hold it for a bit uh, this brings you now into my workshop. We'll start down here. Um, firstly, uh, one of the lathes. I've got, I've got a couple of lathes. Um, I've actually got three here at the moment because I, I'd sold, I'd sold, I sold one to, when I bought this my my new Vic uh, and an Axminster lathe, which I use occasionally for demonstrations, uh, only at the the, the, the Anglesey Vintage Show. Uh, which I which I do, or occasionally be, I'll take it to the club. Um, it's actually set up at the moment with a, a Simon Hope um, to, uh, 
what you call a threading jig. Uh, and one of the things I've been trying to do is to learn to thread uh, properly. And in fact, why I've set it up is that I'm supposed to be giving a demonstration at the club uh, in July um, with this. So whether it goes ahead, I don't know. But one of the things I might well try to do is if this works well tonight, um, is that uh, I will try and set the camera up and, and do it to, virtually to the to, to the members itself. Nice little nice little lathe and a and a super and a super jig. Um, one of the things that I've, I've tried to do, I don't can do this. I don't even see the yeah, see that. Um, that's a steel nut, um, and a lot of the thread, a lot of the threading that people do is um, quite fine. But one of the ones that Simon's done um, is quite a coarse thread. And the reason I made that is that Axminster, um, oops, sell these uh, for hanging up on the wall. I thought, well, why can't we make, why can't we use, we play with wood, so let's not, let's use those. So I tried making those and it does, and it does work. And some of the other, Small, these are all just little test pieces I've done of threading. And we come now to my sort of new toy, um, which is, um, I, when I went to, to the masterclass with Glenn Lucas, Glenn, Glenn's, all the lathes he'd got, it was the Vic Mark, and I, I, just totally different to the, the lathe that I'd got, which was, which was, which was a Jet 1642. Um, but this, I felt, Right, there's no pockets in shrouds. Um, I'm getting on a bit. I might as well spend 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 the the okay, grandchildren's inheritance. And okay, I bought this lathe. Frozen, or is everybody frozen? Okay, Pat, can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Still here. It's, it's still okay for me. I'm not sure if it's just Pat. Yeah, it's some people it's are talking out there. Okay. okay. Yeah, Michael, thank you. Okay, so th this is the the lay the, the lay the board. And I decided originally, uh, I, I'd never done anything really big, so I thought I'll buy, buy it with the outrig. Uh, and by the, it, it, all this, the, the lathe came in February, um, and the other two bits came the week before the lockdown. Uh, and the one thing I think uh, Phil Irons was talking about was the swing bed um, on, on, on the lathe. And it's a wonderful thing because the bed, it's the, the tail stock um, is, is about 20, 22, 23 kilos uh, in, in weight. And you start lifting it on and off as you've got it, but now you can just push it out of the way completely and I can actually, you, I, I also have um, a Simon Hope um, hollowing jig. And in fact, that's the monitor. But since I put this lathe in, I'm going to get it. Just, I've got a spare monitor I can, I can use um, for, for, for doing that, which, which is great. Um, and uh, it, it, works, it, works, it works well. I do have, I am keen on an extraction. Um, I've got three extract, two two in the roof, um, and um, the the one for the uh, dust from the from the lathe. But I just want to show you something. I used to have the extraction outside, and only you can see a point that hole there. Well, that got, that goes through the wall uh, into a shed of built at the back. But unfortunately, a couple of years ago, um, and those of you, I was up at the seminar, I was the idiot who was on sticks. Um, I had a bad accident, uh, bad back, and uh, had an operation. But I was off for five months, so I didn't use the extraction. Um, and when I came back, I thought, that's funny, the power's down on the extractor. Couldn't work it out why. In the end, I found out why. A rat had got in and built its nest actually in the tube itself. 
so that, that put paid. So I had to pull it all out, take it apart. So I thought it was an opportunity as well to change things. So in fact, that's what I built this um, sort of panelling uh, with the perspex in to divide the uh, turning area because you get all this, the, 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 the shavings, etc., uh, all over the place. But it, do, it, did re, it did work well. So putting everything there, I've got uh, some of the, uh, uh, for returning um, after a wet, wet timber. And on there, you'll see my uh, tutor's badge uh, from the uh, AWGB. And that was probably, in all my 30 odd plus years, that was the most nervous thing I've ever done. Um, don't ask me why. Uh, I we arranged four of us to do the tutoring here, or the, the, the exam here, um, and all from the, from the same club. And but when I I was doing that and practicing, and one of the things I'd say to anybody, have a look at the AWGB website. It's brilliant. And one of the set things that's on there is that you can download it. It's free. It's teach yourself turning. It's well, well worth the well worth the effort, and the reason why I wanted to do that was just to give myself more confidence. But also, if there was any young guy from the club who wanted some help, he could come, and at least I could I could know I could I could teach him properly. Some of my other, my other stuff around here, I use uh, the CBN wheels, but this is this is this is my uh, sharpening station. Um, that I that I that I use, and if you notice that as the front is the uh, the wheels, and it can pull this round, and in fact is the um, the Sorby system um, on the back, and then all all the um, other gubbins is I can go in the drawers. One of the things I'd like to just sort of point point out to you is, is these um, that they're the jigs, but what one of the things I picked up from when I was seeing Glenn was that he he, he used three um, three, of the, three of the jigs and all colour coded um, so that you knew which tool to, and there was no pick, no messing in time, change it changing things uh, so I bought an extra couple and colour coded them so I can now do the, with the, with the tools I want but one of the things that I learned from Albert and Albert was a great teacher and was up here a few weeks ago before the lockdown is with, with, with these and these go on your there so whichever so you don't have to keep looking at it you know when you cut that in it's the right distance away and that one for red and green for both and, and blue slightly is slightly different so that that that's that's a tip that Albert gave me uh, and uh, it does, it does, it does work well. Got a couple of chucks up there um, using uh, the, the supports, and then, oops, over here um, is uh, some of the tools that are used. And I think one of the things I've I've now learned is you can have, you, just, you have too many tools, and most of the tools that I've bought. I've come from people, dare I say, who've fallen off the perch um, and uh, people are selling them. And it's sad, but wood turners do, do, do tend to be of the, of the older generation. And I'm one, and I can say that because I'm, 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 I'm one of them. Uh, so I've got all different tools uh, in here, um, all, all the bits and pieces. All, all my sanding discs uh, are there, and then in there is the, the, the Simon Hope hollow, hollowing system. It gets cold occasionally in Anglesey, so I do have a, a fire in the in the winter. That was that's the, the the one that didn't work earlier on, so we'll move that out of the way. Uh, and one of the things I've tried to do is I realise that you can get good tools and you can get bad tools. So over the years, I've decided to go to Festool. And all the tools that I use generally are Festool. And I think it was Paul uh, Starr saying about the, um, the domino jointer. 
the domino jointer is an unbelievable tool and what you can do with it is, is absolutely amazing you can get rid of and i got rid of my mortis and my mortis system and the tenoning jig and all that sort of stuff the festool stuff i do i do like it's not cheap but it's the best and the beauty of it is that, that, that you, if you get get a breakdown on, on one of them you send it back nine times out of ten they send you a new one uh, some of the stuff that I that I that I use um, is up there I, because dare I say I'm getting older. I tend to forget sometimes where to put things, so I try to I try to keep things reasonably neat and also with names on as to what's uh, as to what as to as to as to what's what what's what's in them. Um, going around to here, oh, just bits and pieces. Um, of, of rubbish, no, not rubbish, but stuff I can use. Um, my my pillar drill, which I use probably quite a lot of, uh, as well. Uh, the bandsaw, um, which is which I like. I think it, it's a it, it's a brilliant it's a brilliant tool, um, and probably I use that more so than the the the, the, the table saw. You'll notice now that everything I've got round here is on wheels and that there is a reason for it is that I can I can shove them away move them to where I want to when I'm doing when doing something this was a this was a good buy um which was the, which was the sanding uh machine the only thing mistake I made um I should have bought the bigger one um uh and it was only 150 quid dearer but it was in hindsight I should have bought it and then there, there is a reason why I, um, that I'll tell you about in a minute. Uh, and but if you you can do wider stuff, but you tend to get a, a you've got to then sand out the ridge by hand. A small the extraction unit that I used to have in the other place is now on a, on a on wheels there. And so if it's a nice day, I can actually wheel out a side through the through the roller shutters. Um, the, 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 that and in fact, especially when I'm using in thickness, the table saw, which you you, you can see, um, just a, a bog standard shepherd, but a brilliant tool, a brilliant tool. Um, my other extraction, which is attached now purely to the to the lathe uh, sander, and then you start to see uh, the base of a base of a Windsor chair. Um, which uh, I've made. That's, in fact, you'll see probably show you in good time some of the templates. That's that's actually the template um, for the base um, of Windsor of Windsor chairs. And the problem with a, a, a full size Windsor chair, uh, you need a piece. The, the base size needs to be at least eighteen inches to start with. An eighteen inch two inch piece of elm. Um, trying to get hold of it is nigh on impossible now. The only elm you can really get is probably from Scotland. Um, but I managed to get some 16, no, 14 inch, I should say. And in fact, I don't know that you can see, but there is, it is joined. Um, if you can guess where the join is, brilliant. Then come round, um, to, to, you'll probably see clamps all over the place. And like Loopy just said, you can never get too many clamps um, with it. Now come to sort of something that perhaps some of you have not seen before. Um, well, firstly, I'll just show you. These are the uh, sort of the other bits mi missing from the chair. These are the, the backs uh, and things like that. But you'll notice that there's a, they're actually on. Um, I'll take those off to show you. Um, this used to fit um, on my other lathe. And the whole idea... Um, when, when you make when you're making uh, the long stays, uh, and some of them can only be oh, I don't know um, half inch, less than half inch, to take out the play, um, you take put it on on the lathe, and this is a, 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 a this is a move. Um, you can slide the steady along 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 as you turn it. Now, one of the things that I managed to acquire. Um, was some of the um, chair making tools, which are from a guy um, called uh, Philip Hindle, who's probably dead now. He was 90 when he, I went on the course, 
probably five, five, six years ago. He was about 85, 90 then, and he wasn't very well. Um, but he, he met, used to make these, these tools. And really, what they are, and to put it simply, is like a big pencil sharpener. Um, and you put your square piece of wood in. Uh, take a bigger one. And if you can see there, um, as you, um, that goes on the lathe like that. And you put, you're turning it. The only thing is you have to turn with the motor in, with it in reverse, the way it's because the way the cutter is. And as you do, you're moving that along and it's that quick. You're just moving it and you end up with a perfect, a perfect piece. But the question was, how do you then get the, oops, I don't know if you see that. How do you get the taper um, at the end? Well, one of the things that came out of, um, believe it or not, the ladder making industry, and those of you um, who are old enough will remember there was wooden ladders, and the wooden ladders had very much so ends, oops, like, like that, and the step. And what it was, was a, a simple tool like that, that you actually turn, put the pressure on, and as you turn, and release the pressure, and it altered the thickness of, of the cut. And that, that did work, that did work very well. So some of the tool, and in fact, it was quite interesting, when I bought these um, from Peter Hindle, um, they were some of the last, but when you start to look at eBay, then you can pick them up in eBay, but they're going for about twice the price um, that they were when they're new because they they really do work and chair makers um, do, do want them but one of the things that I, I say was my claim to fame um, uh, was that I was asked a few years ago to make the chair and it's called the chair for the Estedford now Wales is noted for two things one is it's a brilliant rugby team and the other thing is it's it's great for its singers and its choirs and being with, being with the rugby there's nothing better than beating the English and the Irish uh, when we play rugby the Scotlands are not too bad but when we when we beat the English and the Irish it's good smack um, but the chair is what's made for the Stedford and the Stedford is literally a prestigious uh, Welsh um, event and Making the chair was something, it surprised me I was asked to do it, um, but I did do it, um, but I said I, I would do it, but I wanted to do it my way, um, and my way was that I wanted to, um, I, 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 want, I wanted to uh, use local wood uh, and for, for my design, and if those of you got Look on, um, put a Stedford into your computer and look at the chairs that have been produced over hundreds, the last couple of 150 years. And they're all, a lot of them are very heavy. But I wanted to make it one Mike, that you could actually Mike, are use. are you showing us something there? Are you trying to show no, us? No, something? sorry, sorry, I'll walk down here. Sorry. Um, yeah, so I decided, oh, I decided. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, hear you now. Right. So I, dec I decided to make the chair. And at that time, um, Prince Andrew, sorry, yeah, uh, yeah, not Andrew, Prince William and, and Kate were living about six fields along from me. And they lived on the Bedorgan estate. And I managed to get oak that came from the Bedorgan estate. But unfortunately, it been down for about... Uh, 15, 18 years and had been planked and it was cupped and it was given all this oak for nothing, loads of it. And I decided to, to take it down, thickness it, and it was re really like cutting iron, but I managed to do it. The, the, the part that really is for me was I had to present, present it uh, at the day in, in Welsh um, to, at the Stedford. 
So that was my real claim to fame. But let's get back now onto, onto the woodworking. Uh, sorry, wood turning. And one of the things that uh, I, uh, I tried to do uh, was to... Um, hang on, I've lost you. Um, Unmute yourself, Mike. Okay, is that better? Yeah, we can hear you now. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that was the first bowl I ever, that I ever, and I didn't make. I wish I had it on. Um, was uh, a bowl that I bought um, with my wife. Oh, I don't. 10, 10 or 12 years ago, made by a, a great guy called Campbell, who, who made it. And really, the finish is still, that's 10 years on it, and it hasn't been touched. It's brilliant. Uh, and, but that was the first one I, I, uh, that I ever bought. And I like to buy nice things, uh, and my wife does. So when the, the Reiki auction came, I was lucky enough to, to get um, two pieces. I did bid for three, um, but one got a bit silly, so I didn't get I didn't get that one. But I got two, and and two two pieces. And the reason why I bid for them was that the one was from Jules Tattersall, which was that which was that one. Now Jules is an Anglesey uh, guy, still does a bit of turning, not as not as much as he used to do, but he, he still turns. But I wanted that because of, um, A, it was Ray Key's piece and also Jules from, from Anglesey. And the second piece uh, I wanted to get, um, which was that one, which was, uh, which was Jason uh, Breach's piece. And I saw Jason um, turn uh, in Ireland um, at the Irish seminar um, and I got to know him quite well at the end of the at the end of the seminar because we were we were stuck. It was the it was the year that there was bad weather and people couldn't fly back, um, and he was stuck and I was stuck, etc. And I got to know him, and it, but I, th I admire Jason very much so because he's able, but the way he teaches and considering the disability that he has and to be able to communicate is something you know everybody should take some notice of. The other piece uh, I got, which I got again in Ireland, which, which was this piece. Um, now this piece um, was something unique to me because the, the guy who turned it um, was, uh, uh, he was a Bulgarian and he came over to the Irish seminar. Uh, and there is, a, there is a little bit, I think, on one of the websites with him turning. It doesn't look like a lathe but he turned it and he, he put this up, up for auction on the, on the night. But the piece that I did like that he did, which was a, a, a flask was unbelievable, but I, I, I bid for this and I actually got it. And Charlie, the uh, president was quite upset because as he said at the night, it's going, it's going out of the country. I said, well, it's only going across the water, but what you'll see at the back, if I can get it right, is he did engrave it um, with everything what he did. But when you see, there's four marks in it. And all it was, was a hammer. He just hammered it on. And the tools, he used four tools and, and, a, and literally a big, a big uh, lump hammer. Knocked it on, turned and turned it. And all those tools that he used were his grandfather's. And to see him do it was, I think, was, unbel was unbelievable to do. So... Uh, I, I'm quite pleased that, I, that I've got that piece, and you've got to now some of some of the pieces that I, that I, that I've I've done walnuts out of uh, burr, uh, the one there. And, and, and now that was this one um, was when one I did with uh, with Glenn Lucas, um, and and that that really changed my thinking in but in. The way I did bowls, and in fact, you'll know some of the ones that you've seen since that, that I've I, I've I've learned from from the things that that, that uh, he taught me. 
Um, the other thing that there is, I've made, which I've got, it's, it's, it's what sells, isn't it? If I can get this back, I don't think you can see it. Let's no, come this way. Is uh, those, which is a, basically a coat hanger, um, just to, just turn pieces, uh, but onto um, onto a burr, and and that that works well, uh, and it's surprising how well they sell. But one of the things that I've, I have would say is that since being involved in the club and now, and now, in fact, being part of the exhibition that goes on, um, one of the things that Anglesey managed to do was to get the cruise ships to come into into Anglesey, uh, and all the, everybody at the club thought great. And there's about eight of us who who, who exhibit. Um, the Americans are going to come off the cruise ships and spend loads of money. Uh, no, they didn't. Um, all they do was go on the coach and they get they taken round and they spent an hour uh, in each little village or whatever, uh, and that's that's about the sum total of, of it all, which is which is a pity. But on the other hand, we do raise, and this, so far we've raised over ten thousand pound for the air ambulance because of the because of the uh, exhibition that, that the, the the club the club does. Let's have a look here. Oh, right. Sorry, I'll show you these pieces. These, this is just the storage stuff that I, uh, I, I use where I keep all my bits and pieces, um, sprays and stuff. And again, there, nothing out on to, uh, on toward. That 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 I find quite good. People, other people have used it. Antiseptic spray. For putting on it on your um, visor, and it does it does stave a lot of the dust sticking uh, as well. My store cupboard for well, I don't know safety glasses, tea light holders, and all the other things, uh, clocks. And one of the things I'm 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 trying to learn is um, the uh, use of the silicone uh, in pieces, and hopefully in the next. Uh, Six months, I'll be able to 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 to, to master to master that, um, and we then oh, that was the other thing I wanted to show you, was that I do when I joined the club, um, because I think somebody said I'd got places to store things. I became I was given a place on the committee as the librarian, and remember that probably slightly different now because everybody looks at YouTube. But one of the things that I've realized is that you can probably learn more from reading things than you can from actually watching. And I've learned a lot um, from reading some of, these, some of these books. And I think the one thing, the one book that I, I'm pleased about that I managed to get hold of, not as a secondhand shop, um, but I've got a friend whose wife works in a... Uh, charity shops and the amount of wood turning books that come through so this was Ray Key's original uh, original book um, I think 1980 eight, 1986 but as you can see it says to Tim, to Tim don't know who they were um, but that's that's it one of the things that I do think though is that there's nothing new um, reading all these books they're all very similar. And I haven't been able to... I think the oldest book or the oldest print I've found um, is this one by Dale Nish. Um, and that one um, is 1976, uh, which was for when it was first printed. And I think looking at the books, there seems to be between 80... And 89, there was quite a, a lot of books produced. A lot of reprints in the 90s, um, but very few new ones. I think the latest new one I, that I've managed to see, believe it or not, is Phil Irons' two-in-one um, one, which is uh, quite an interesting, because the pages are split um, with, it, with it. But I, I think learning from the books, because you can actually bring them into the workshop, and you can actually follow, if you're going to do something, you can actually follow it. 
but it's on a YouTube or, or demonstrator show. You, you can't, you're not in there. You can look at, you can look at the picture and maybe it's me, but I, I find it easier. Um, what else have we got? Um, I think, oh, yes. One of my um, things is I, I do like nice chisels, not wood turning chisels, but chisel. This, this was my uh, sort of a Christmas present one year from my wife, which was a, a set of a set of Hayuki Japanese chisels, which are absolutely superb, and I only use them on very special on very special jobs. Um, what else have we got? That's about, I think, oh, oh yeah, just, oh, just to show you up here, um, what, again, one of the things I, I decided to try and do was make my own polish, um, and, oops, in there, um, yeah, there's, there's blocks of, um, be beeswax, and carbonara wax, and I actually make my own. I do did try, and I did try making my own polish, and it does work. Um, I got it wrong in the first place to got got the mixes wrong, but I was able to to sort it out. And because I can get the beeswax from a friend who's got loads of bees, and it's a way, it's basically a waste to them. Um, I, I I do use it, but there we go. That's about it from me. I'll walk over here. And if anybody has got any questions, I'll try and answer them. We have a couple for you, John. But just to compliment you on your workshop, it's really well organised and tidy. I like your uh, yellow safety border on your floor mat, Sue. That's a good idea for where to start and stop. Yeah. Just a couple of questions for you. Um, the first one is, how and why do you use the Sorby flat sharpening system in conjunction with the round wheel system, if that makes sense to you. Yeah, no, I, um, let me just let me flip this if we can. Um, uh, the, re the, re the reason is very, very simple. Um, I prefer doing the skew chisels on the Sorby. Um, don't ask me why. Uh, it's just, it's just the way it is. And I, I tend only to, I use the Sorby for the skew chisels, but also for my, my for my plane, my planes. I've got uh, quite a few planes that I, that I use, different planes. So because they're, they're, they're you know, two and a half inches, um, I, I tend to use the, the Sorby system um, for that. And also I find that it's just, it, I'm setting this, especially with the skew, all the time. Was the others using that system I had before with the three um, uh, to get the three year forty fives or whatever it is that, that they're on? Okay. Okay, John. Thank you. Um, seasoning wood, John. What's your method, and what material would you use to, to seal your timber? I ju I ju I oh um, to seal it. I've got uh, a wax. Uh, my wife lost her a fish fryer uh, so I tend to use wax uh, on that all the old candles that I can get and uh, throw it in there the bigger with the big ends I just dip a brush into the into it and wax and wax the ends okay um, and how do you season it um, how long do you leave it how, how you right well those those pieces out outside have been down for about three three four years three years um and uh i've lost a, a few pieces of, of, of dried out but the positioning where they are the sun doesn't go on them and they're actually gain, leaning against a um stand uh, a wall a stone wall uh so the back tends to keep quite cool that's okay then once I'll, t I'll either turn them sorry put them onto the band so chainsaw them uh, rough chain so I'll put them on the band so and then put them into the other and I don't don't ask me why because I don't know the reason you know, I've been asked it before why I don't I don't get a lot of wood that splits um, I, whether it's by luck or management I don't know uh, but in that shed uh, and it 
it, the sun is on the roof probably for most of the day because on the workshop I've got uh, 16 solar panels um, and uh, so the sun's on there all, all day uh, but on, on the other hand we do get a lot of wind in Anglesey and I tend to open uh, the side door and the front doors when I'm about are on it and it that I think the wind blows through it. Okay, Michael, I'm just waiting for a question. Here we go. He said he spent a week with Len Lucas. Lucky chap. Is, is the A key thing that stands out as a tip toe in his bowl turning or design? Sorry, sorry oh. man, unmute yourself and ask that question, please. Yeah, you, 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 spent, you said he spent a week with Glenn, which is fantastic. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just interested, is there a, a key nugget or, or, or thought that, that's really st stuck with you as, 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 as part of that? Because, I mean, Glenn's obviously a fantastic sort of bowl turner, um, exponent of the, of the technical part, but what, what have you taken away from that week? Yeah, I, I think uh, because I said Albert and I went over. Albert is a professional turner, member of the RPT, de demonstrates um, quite a lot in the north of England um, and Wales. Um, but he went over to with us, um, and we went, I think he went over for the Guinness as well, but that's just another story, um, was that Albert wanted to see how Glenn taught and when you think he's teaching eight people at a time, um, and in fact, his new workshop will probably be 10. Um, it's it's got to be a different technique. But his technique in turn in teaching was what Alba and I went for because I wanted to be able to turn turn a bowl out uh, and get the proportions right. I was I was I was okay at turning bowls, but there was something wrong. There was always something I didn't feel happy with. Uh, and but one of the things that he insisted on and I do now all the time and that is before the final cut touch the sharpener touch your tool up on, on the sharpener it's as simple as that and it makes a heck of a difference on that on that final cut um, with it and the other thing that he he, he, he he likes to do is in fact when he when you're sanding is in fact making sure that you don't you don't use the same sand, same sanding disc. If you're power sanding um, on an, on another piece, you keep changing. You keep changing it. It's a bit more uh, probably because he's selling sandpaper. Um, but on the other hand, it does work and it does give you a far a far a far nicer finish. Um, I I like the the finishes I like to use. I don't like a shine a shiny finish or a lacquer. Um, that's a person personal thing. But when you see, I don't know, really, well, you can't see it now, um, is that, um, hang on. Um, when you see the shine on that, yeah, that, that, that is, that, that, that's a, a pattern of um, patented uh, finish that a, from a company from Liverpool make. You don't have to, you don't have to, um, sand the seal it or anything and it works well but I don't really like the fancy the, the gloss fit the gloss finish on it but on the other hand I found that the public when you're selling them they tend to tend to like it um, but just as a point and I, I, I meant to mention this before um, that um, one of the things I learned when I was working was to observe people um, and those of you who do craft shows, go and watch the people, um, what they do. And you'll all agree, nine times out of ten, they pick, a, they pick the piece up, they feel it, look, feel around it. Not how a wood turner would look at it or feel it. They'll say, oh, that's heavy or whatever. But then go and watch them when you've got a piece in the gallery and they don't touch it. They just look at it. And there is a, there is a big difference between a gallery piece and you can put a bowl in a gallery, but they won't touch it. They'll just look at it. Um, but on a, on a craft show, they'll handle it and everything like that. So what I've always tried to do, and, and, and Glenn does as well, is bowls, and there's a bit more weight left in the bottom of the bowl than at the side. So it feels, it feels heavier. 
Now I know Helen does a piercing, um, and uh, there's there's no way to tall it, no way to tall in it. But when somebody picks a bowl up, they want to be able. I think they want to say, "Oh, that's that that that's a, that's a nice piece of uh, uh, timber." It might it mightn't be uh, turned the way a turner would want to do it, but it's one of those things. All right, 